part thriller, part gothic novel, part mystery, part literary fiction, Liz Jensen's The Ninth Life of Louis Drax is a novel of heartbreak and love, jealousy, and desire. The story takes place in France. Nine-year-old Louis Drax falls into a ravine and into a coma, this event sets into action a dynamic set of interactions between his mother, Natalie, and his doctor, Pascal Denachet. Louis is as intelligent and deceitful as he is accident-prone. Whether he will eventually emerge from the coma into which he has fallen is not known. How his fall actually took place is unclear as well, although it followed an argument between his parents. His condition has left his mother in shock, and his father, Pierre, has suddenly disappeared. Pierre and Natalie do not live together, but remain married. Pierre is not the boy's biological father. Denachet works to draw Louis out of his coma, forming a deep connection between himself and the boy. The mystery surrounding Louis's accident begs to be unraveled. Pierre, who has disappeared, becomes a likely suspect. Louis's fall from the cliff into the ravine is just the latest in a series of incidents in which Louis has defied death, including bouts of botulism and meningitis. When Louis is recovered from the ravine he is near death, with an injured brain and a rating of about 5 on the Glasgow Coma Scale, which ranks the severity of comas on a scale of 3 to 15, 3 being the most severe, and 5 falling within the severe range. Lewis's narrative voice, along with that of the untraditional Dr. Danache, makes the unfolding story that much more mysterious. The comatose Lewis has much to say as a narrative voice. He tells about being alive in his present state. He talks of the experience of being born. He discusses being interested in diseases, poisons, and sex. Much of what Lewis has to say comes from a voice he hears, named Gustav. Readers are likely meant to see that unless a scene in the text is clearly a flashback, Lewis's events take place in his unconscious mind. Danache, meanwhile, explains that doctors like him, who specialize in comas, are not respected in the medical community because of their low clear-up rate. He himself is further shunned because of his methods, which include a belief in telepathy. He tells Natalie that not all brain activity is observable through traditional medical devices. She is undaunted by his beliefs and perhaps attracted to him because of them. He falls for her and as a result is slow to consider any role she might have had in her son's situation, though everyone's actions seem suspect. By Natalie's account, Louis was pushed by Pierre. Louis tells Gustav that he fell while fleeing the area where his parents were fighting. At one point, Louis sits up just as Natalie and Danache are kissing, but he immediately slips back into his coma. As the novel continues, Danache's wife, Sophie, sends him to a separate bedroom, as she realizes that there are issues in their marriage. He apologizes to Natalie for kissing her, but soon afterward they receive handwritten letters, seemingly in Louis's voice, that threaten them because of their affair. Natalie suggests that the letters might be from Pierre, whom she describes as violent, when Danache decides to end things with Natalie, she tells him Louis was a result of rape, and she and the doctor end up sleeping together. As the plot further unfolds, Danache finds footage on a security tape of himself writing a prescription for poison, and also the earlier letters, which suggests that he is being controlled telepathically by Louis. Eventually Danache begins to suspect that Natalie was responsible for Louis's injury, when her story to the police is different, and when Louis's grandmother indicates that she was never raped. In an experiment, trying to get Louis to use the doctor as a channel again, Danache tells the real story of what happened at the picnic near the ravine. Pierre had found that Louis was taking Natalie's birth control pills to ward off the possibility of becoming a rapist, and Pierre threatened to take Louis away, which led the boy to deliberately walk off the cliff in order to let his mother be heroic. Louis tells this story through the doctor and then dies, he is revived, but still remains comatose. Louis ends the narrative by telling of the pleasure in being taken care of. Gustav, who, it is revealed, is actually the deceased Pierre, tells Louis to awaken from his coma. Because of the way in which Louis was kept from Pierre, it is somewhat ironic that he was able to be a better father in death than in life, and indeed only within the mind of the boy. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.